Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the channel, we are taking a look, and guys, I am so happy to be bringing you this game today. Uh, we are taking a look at The Crows of Copper Shell Bay, a new little tin game from Paul Stapleton. Paul Stapleton being the designer of my favorite adventure game of all time, Popper's Ladder, and of another great adventure game, BN1. And this is a little kind of worker placement slash action selection adventure game set in the world of Popper's Ladder. And let me tell you, this game packs so much good stuff into this tiny box. Uh, what do I have for comparison? Um, a pocket knife. <laughs> there, there's a pocket knife. So it, it's a little bigger than, you know, Jason Glover's uh, 10 series, maybe twice as big, but uh, it's as good. And man, this game is awesome. If you're looking for a great little adventure style game that packs a lot of game into a small box, I can highly recommend this. So let's read a little bit about this. Three days before you get the beak. Prepare yourself for a tiny tin tale set in the coastal town of Copper Shell Bay. You play a dung shoveler from the local maggot farm who has three days to pay their debt of 60 gems to the wicked crows. And the crows, that's not a metaphor. That's not a, the name of a gang. Those are actual crows. You've borrowed money from a, a, a murder of crows and they want their money back or they will peck you. Uh, will you spend this precious time fishing and foraging or exploring the carnival and gambling your luck away? You could just wait until the nightfall and put in extra hours at work or rest and indulge in some well-earned supper. On the other hand, the Miners Guild is paying would-be adventurers to venture into the dangerous tunnels beneath the town. The Crows of Coppershell Bay is a game of luck pushing, coin counting, dungeon crawling, and village living for one player. And yes, it has all of that and more. So let's uh, dump everything out and then we'll kind of set up the game. And while we're doing that, we'll take a look at everything you get. And uh, then we'll play a couple sample turns. All right. So we get some big cards. We get our instruction uh, book here, pretty well written. We do get one um, little promo card here for a new bird for Popper's Ladder, a songbird. So we'll put that aside. We get a whole bunch of little wooden uh, wooden tokens to keep track of different things here. Uh, so we have uh, these little mine, these little quest markers here. These are used for when you go dungeon diving, when you take on a side quest for the Miner's Guild. So let's put those aside there. Uh, these little gear tokens here, these are used to keep track of your items. And so you will use these to keep track of, of what items you have on a little item card. A really nice use of a, of a one card to, to be a whole bunch of different items. We have our health tokens there. We also have our pep tokens, and these are energy that we can spend to do things. Now, I just realized while I was making this video that I lost one. There should be four. I had this set up on the coffee table, and I must have, when I was uh, packing things up to bring it back here into the uh, dungeon dive room, I must have dropped one, and I can't find it. It's probably under the couch, so I'm going to be using these four tokens, four pep tokens, on this video. So sorry about that. I don't know what happened to it. I went to go look for it and I couldn't find it. It must have fallen and bounced somewhere. Uh, we have a little meeple. So this is you. This is you'll use that little meeple to keep track of uh, things in town, of the actions you're taking. We have a little timer token because we have three days to earn our 60 coins in order to pay back the uh, crows. We have these tokens here. We'll use these to keep track of our stats on our character card. And then this will be the uh, token that we use to keep track of how much money we have to win the game. And then we have a stack here of larger cards and a stack here of smaller cards. So the larger cards, there are four different characters that we can play as. We There are four different dung shovelers. We have a Brad, uh, Brabin Hignell. We have Trevor Hampmeyer, uh, Grolf Gronth, <laughs> and Old Paw Peth. Uh, let's be Old Paw Peth here. And so each of the characters 
will have two special abilities, and you can choose one at the beginning of the game to have. So um, Old Paw Path can be a survivalist, and he can discard two fish from his supply at any time to gain one health and two pep. Or he can be a gambler, and once per carnival game, Peth can reroll the die. We have our strength and agility. Strength will help you in combat. Agility will help you avoid things. And then we have our XP tracker down here at the bottom, and we will use the yellow cube to keep track of our XP. When you reach level three, you can use both skills, and then you also have to flip the minor skill. We'll talk about flipping in a minute, so we'll set him up to the side there. We have our purse card here. This is where we keep track of how much money we have. We have to get up to 60 by the end of day three, and we start with two, so we'll put our token there. And then here we have our item card, and man, I think this is so smart. So these are all, the, all of the different items that you can get in the game. You can have six different types of brews, and those brews will help you do certain things, uh, maybe uh, gain strength or gain health, uh, things like that, your typical kind of, kinds of potions. And then we have these different tools. So we have a pocket watch you can discard to ignore time. Time is a commodity in this game. Time is a resource that you need to manage. We have our gloves here. Discard this to ignore the first two uh, kind of hazards when you are digging, fishing, or forging at a location. We have a shovel. Move, uh, when you move on to the story chamber, story chambers are in quests. Uh, discard this to draw two story cards and then choose one to play. And then also we have our lantern. When you roll the die to resolve a random encounter uh, card, discard this to add two to the result. So the higher the die on your random encounters, the better. And then we have a little bit of a more simpler explanation down here uh, on the other side. And then to the left, right, top, and bottom, or to the left, right, and bottom, we can keep track of things that we find of different items. We have fish to the left, materials to the right, and forageables to the bottom there. And that will correspond to the position of those icons on the story cards, the multi-use story cards. Such great use of those cards. And then to keep track of your items, you place one of these gear tokens on the item card, and that's the item that you have. Old Paw Peth, he starts with some gloves. So we'll place one of those uh, gear icons on the glove there to us uh, to show that. And then we can keep these off to the side. We will start with four health. We'll keep those down there. And then we will start with four pep. Remember, these are substitute pep tokens because I lost one of mine. Um, must have happened yesterday. Man, I'm bummed out about that. Uh, maybe I can find another green lightning bolt there. Okay, so that's all the large cards. We won't use that other character. This is a cheat sheet card, and this just kind of tells you all the iconography and what the different things on the story cards mean. And you will need this for a while until you learn that. And it, it, it's, it's pretty easy. It's not a difficult game, but there's a lot of information crammed on the cards. And so the, it is nice that it does come with a cheat sheet there. Okay, so then we have an achievement. So if you want to do, if you're a, a, an achievement chaser, you can keep track of some of your achievements that you've uh, accomplished during the game. And then here we have our daytime card. And this is where we'll keep track of, uh, of time. And our little hourglass here will move as we take actions that take up time. And then at the end of each day, it'll become nighttime. And then at nighttime, we can do three different actions. We can get some sleep, make some dinner, or go to work. And you can take three different actions at night. And you can take uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different actions each day. And then we have our location cards. And this is kind of where the worker placement thing comes in. This is where your action selection comes in. These are six different locations. So we have Copper Sand, the Scrap Yard. We have the Bay Carnival. And at the Bay Carnival, there are four different carnival mini games that you can play. We have the Burrow Glade, the Chemist Guild, the Market, the Miner's Guild, and the Crow's Nest. The Crow's Nest is the card that you will trigger at the end of the game. At the end of day three, you visit the Crow's Nest. You have to pay them their 60 coins and also roll on this chart five times. And so you want to make sure that you've earned enough, that you have enough uh, health or enough pep or enough other things to survive the Crow's. And then the Miner's Guild here. The Miner's Guild is associated with these six different quests, and these are little dungeon crawling mini games. So we have the Nest of Scuttlers. So we have our quest set up and our quest card. We will be moving through this dungeon and those icons will trigger certain things. We have the Plum Cap Grove 
And there's the dungeon for Plum Cap Grove. And then we have Finding Mr. Boydle. And there's the dungeon for Finding Mr. Boydle. These are all shallow quests. When the mine card gets flipped over to its more difficult side, then we can go on deep quests. And here we have the Flooded Vault. We have the Specter Stones. And we have the Snabbit King. So we'll place those over there. And then you want to place all of your location cards in a clockwise circle around your daytime card, starting with the number one with copper sand at the top. So at copper sand, you can go fishing or you can go beach combing. Place that there. At the scrapyard, you can dig for materials or you can use those materials to craft tools. So, so those are some of the items that can help you out. At the Bay Carnival, we can visit the stalls so we can play games. We can play those carnival games. We can visit the seer or we can buy some food. Okay, and here's those carnival games. So those are little uh, pressure luck mini games that you can participate in. Basically, you'll pay two, two coins and do something and hope to get some coins back. So we'll place those next to the uh, carnival. We have the Burrow Glade. We can go foraging for items and then we can, or we can relax in the Glade in order to heal a little bit. We have the Chemist's Guild. We can sell our forageables. We can buy brews and we can craft brews. We have the Market. We can buy and sell items and we can sell our fish that we got from uh, catching fish at Copper Sand Bay over there. We have our Miner's Guild and our Crow's Nest. So that's our town. That's the town of uh, Copper Shell Bay. It's all set up. We will place our uh, little time token there on the first arrow for day one. Our mini me, Meeple, <laughs> will go into that first uh, uh, card there. And then the last thing, there's two more things we need to take a look at. And we have these special story cards, A, B, C, and D. These will, you will be told to draw at certain times and you will have to encounter those. We'll place those up there. We have our story deck. Now, this is a really cool deck. Paul Stapleton really kind of uh, hit it out of the park, just absolutely nailed it with this small story deck of multi-use cards. So the cards have a lot of information on them, but they don't feel too cluttered. And that is uh, a testament to Paul's really clean iconography and his clean art style. So some of the cards will be with a red banner. Those will be enemies that we have to fight. And so when we are dungeon crawling, we might have to fight a wraith or maybe a barrow white or a jelly cube and things like that. The cards with the uh, purple blue banner there, those are random encounters. And with those, you will have to roll a die and then do what it says. So there's a whole bunch of cool random encounters to to uh, have in this game. And then all of the icons around the side, those are used for when you trigger the different actions on the locations. And let's take a look here at our cheat sheet here. So starting in the upper left, we have fish. So when you fish at Copper Sand Bay, you will draw a, a certain number of cards and you will look for the kinds of fish that you have. And the red exclamation points, those are hazards. And so those will kind of dictate how hard your day of that activity was. And then in the upper right here, we have uh, those are the materials that the card provides. And so when you go for uh, the scrapyard and you dig for materials, you will draw a certain number of those just like the fish. And then you can combine those to craft different types of tools. Okay, down here at the bottom, on the bottom right, we have the forageables. So when you go foraging, same thing. Those are the icons that you can find when you go foraging. And then here in the middle, on number seven is the lucky charm. So uh, like the lucky charm, D6 and Popper's Ladder, you might have to draw one of these and look and test your luck based on the lucky charm. And then we have next to the lucky charm is the item. So when you draw a card and you're told to uh, look for an item, that's for looting. You will look at the item icon. So when you loot something, that's the item you get. And finally, the last icon icon is the coin icon. And that will be used when you are told to uh, draw to acquire coins or something like that. So really, really a cool use of these cards. I like it a lot. It will take a little bit of time just to remember what all of those uh, mean, their positioning, 
but with this really handy uh, cheat sheet, it will be no problem. And then I guess the last card we have is our story's end card. And we place this on the bottom. When we reach this card, we do what it says, we flip it over, and then we continue to play. So at certain times, at the end of the day, at nighttime, you will roll a D6, and each one of these major locations is numbered from one, two, three, four, five, and six. You will roll that die, and then you will flip that card over, and it becomes it, its kind of more difficult side, maybe a nighttime side, you can think of it. And so the benefits won't be as great, or you might have stronger penalties for when you fail at something. And so you never really know which location is going to get flipped from one game to the next. And usually I think two or three uh, locations will be flipped in a single game. So this is our first day and we can go out and remember, we need to get those, uh, we need to get those coins because those crows of Copper Shell Bay, they are bad news. Uh, you were desperate and you were foolish. You borrowed 50 gems from the crows and now they want them back with 20% interest within three days. You're a lowly uh, dung shoveler at the local maggot farm, and there's no way you'll make that kind of money in time, and the crows are staunchly inflexible. Fortunately, there are other ways to earn a wage in Copper Shell Bay. Fish at the beach, forage in the glade, or dig for materials in the scrapyard. Visit the carnival, venture into the local mines, or if you're really stuck, put in a stint with the maggots. I love, man, I love just... The, the, the theming of this Popper's Ladder world is so cool. It's so charming and whimsical, but there's also this kind of weird, kind of dark, twisted side. It has that really cool fairy tale like element. Uh, this is for XP. We'll put that on zero XP. We start on two strength and one agility, and then we can choose to bolster one. We can choose to upgrade one. I'll start with a three strength and a two agility. And I think I will be. I will be a gambler, so I will use the gambling special ability. Uh, once per carnival game, Peth can re-roll the die. So I might want to focus on the carnival games for uh, to, to, to earn some money to press my luck. But let's see here. Okay, so let's take our first action. I think uh, let's go. Let's go fishing for the day. So I will go up to Copper Sand Bay and I will choose the go fishing option. And I pay, uh, pay fish up to three. So we'll take three story cards from the top of the story deck. One, two, three. Again, you are pressing your luck because if you get too many of those exclamation points, something bad might happen. You will have kind of a bad day of fishing. So let's look at our fish. Ooh, we did get three. One, two, three. So we have three yellow fish and a blue fish. However, if we have three or four, we have accidentally caught uh, three or four of those exclamation points. We have three. We have accidentally caught a razor fish and we take a point of damage. So I will discard one of my hearts. Ouch. Okay. However, I do have, I do have uh, this glove and I could discard this to ignore the first two you uh, drew, the first two hazards while fishing or foraging. Uh, let's go ahead and use that. I will use that now. So I'll, I'll ignore one of those twos. I will uh, reinstate. I will heal back up to one. And so I don't have to pay that penalty. So now I have three yellow fish and a blue fish. And these go to the left of my item card there to show my fish. Now I can take those and I can sell them at the, at, at the market. Um, okay, so that took one action because it does have the hourglass there. Uh, next up, let's see. I'm going to, uh, since I'm at the beach, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to go beach combing. So roll the die twice, collect gems equal to the difference between the two. If you roll the same number twice, you collect nothing. So we're out, we're out there with our metal detector looking for people who have dropped some coins. So we have a six, okay, hopefully a one and a six. Okay, so we find nothing, great. Okay, so that took a time also. Okay, now let's see. Um, Let's go to, let's go dig for some materials. So again, we can draw up to three and now we're looking at the materials. So that'll be the upper right. So we found two stones and some cloth. Okay, yeah, two, two ore and some cloth. And we have two exclamation points. Uh, if we have two useless junk, discard one material card from our supply. So we don't have any in our supply right now, but we will have to discard one of these. I will discard one of the ore 
And then I will place these in my material section. And so we have an oar and a cloth. Uh, I can't make anything with an oar and a cloth. Uh, if I have some ore and wood, I can make a shovel. If I have a cloth and wood, I can make a time, uh, a, a stopwatch or a pocket watch. So those are the different kinds of items you can make. So that took um, one time, which I accidentally moved my, my timer there. So let's see, we did one, two, three. Okay, so we dug for some materials. Uh, let's see here, what can I do? Discard identical forageables for some, uh, let's, yeah, let's go foraging here. So we'll go to the foraging. And again, I will draw three, see what kind of forageables I can find. And those will be down here on the bottom. Okay, so forageables. So we found two shells and what is that? Uh, some sap. Two shells and sap. We have two hazards. For the hazards, rot. Discard one forageable from your supply. I will discard one of my shells. And so the forageables here, we can go to the chemist and we can use those to craft different kinds of potions. So I will put these to the bottom of my item card. Okay, so I haven't really gotten any money yet. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, let's go to the let's go to the stalls at the Bay Carnival. So that did take one time. We'll go to the stalls at the Bay Carnival, and we can pay two gems. So I have two gems in my purse right now. I will remove that, and then we can choose a game to play. So we can do Fortune Forage. We could do Pest Racing. We could do Rollin' for Tat or the Strong, the strong Theans. Uh, let's see. Fight the first Strong Theans in the usual way if you win. Okay, so the Strong Theans, these are the strengths. And so you will, you will have to have combat against one of these guys. Uh, Brebert, Hovis, Crucia, the Beastly Ben, or Mod. And so this is kind of like a battle of, a, a battle of strengths. There are fe feats of strength. But let's see here. Let's do pest racing. I like pest racing. Okay, so place you, your, your meeple, on the starting space. Choose a pest uh, to race. Place a, uh, where is, place one of these on its space. This is the pest. Oh, I see. So if you choose the bat, the bat is starter to the end. So you will be pressing your luck to earn more, uh, more money there. Or the little mosquito, you have a better chance of winning. Okay, so roll the die and move you that many spaces along the track. If you roll one, move as many spaces as your athletics instead or your agility. So my agility is two. So rolling a one is good. You can also spin pep to move one more space. Then roll the die again and move the uh, the pest that many spaces. So we have to we have to race against this pest. Okay, so we'll place. Uh, let's go for the spider. We'll take right in the middle there. I'll place my guy on the starting spot there. And now we're gonna roll the die. Come on, I wanna roll a one and a six. Hey, that's pretty good. So we will move that many spaces. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I don't wanna roll a one. A one would only be good if my agility was higher. So uh, right now it's a two. So basically I can't move just a one, but okay. So we moved six. So now let's roll for the pest. And five, ooh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, my turn. And one, okay, well, I moved two. So go two, because that's my agility. Now the pest, two, one, two, me, six. Very good, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, it's close, neck and neck here. A one for the pest, very good, all right. And here we go, two, one, two. All right, I'm at that yellow space there. All right, here's the pest roll. Five, oh no, one, two, three, four, five. The spider has pulled ahead. And me, six, very good. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I'm one space away. All right, the pest can win here. And a two, no. Okay, so I actually won. Yay, I won my race against the pest. And I get seven coins for that. Nice, okay, so put my coin marker there up to that and then move my timer one. And then we have one more action for the day. Uh, let's see here, we could go questing. I think I'll go questing on the next day. Um, let's go ahead and let's go fishing again. Let's end the day fishing. We're trying to get some multiples of fish, kind of a set collection so we can sell them and we can get some good money. So one, two, three. 
Okay, and fish. All right, so we have a star, a blue, and we still don't have a green fish. We really need a blue, yellow, and green fish to, to um, in order to trade for a whole bunch of money. But we do have six fish now. So this is the old. This is the uh, main amount. This is the the maximum amount of fish that we can have in our bag. You can have six fish, six materials, and six forageables. And then if we ever have seven fish we get XP and that's how you level up your character. But then you would have to discard one of your fish. So pretty cool. Okay, so that was the last action for the day. It is nighttime now. So we remove that time token, we flip it over and now it's nighttime. If you are in town, move here. If you're on a quest, you can continue your quest. And then and now we have uh, three actions that we can take at night. We can get some sleep and that takes time and we get two pep back. I don't need to spend any pep, so I'm good. Uh, we can make dinner. You can pay two gems to heal yourself. I don't need to worry about that. Or we can go to work. Uh, let's go to work. I can spend a pep for two coins. So I'm tinkering at night. I'm tinkering away. Maybe I'm writing or, or painting something. I'm doing something at night to work to make some more coin. So I get two more. Okay, so that was one action there. I think I will, I will do that again. So I will move that there and I will spend one pep to go up two. And then finally, I will get some sleep. I will spend time to gain two pep back. And then now it is daytime again. And so we'll flip that over. And now we also have to do this. At the end of the night, roll the die and flip that location. Then flip this card back over. And now we're at day two. We are in the center uh, of the town and let's see which location gets flipped. Six, the market. So the market gets flipped. Unfortunately, that kind of sucks for us because I was going for uh, fishing and so I'm not going to earn as much money when I sell my fish. So that that is an unfortunate role there. I spent all day yesterday. I spent a lot of time yesterday fishing and it's not going to pay off as um, as well as I thought it would. That is a bummer, but hey, that is the life of a dung farmer, of a dung shoveler. So let's say we wanted to go to the Miner's Guild today and we could go on a quest and we could take a look here at the Nest of Scuttlers. So this would be a, a, a simple quest that we could take a shallow quest. And this tells us that tales abound of scratching and scraping from within the walls some of the younger miners won't go in on their own and the older ones aren't much good in a fight. It's an infestation of scuttlers and nightmarish skulls that sit atop six bony legs. The guild will pay two gems for each scuttler you slay. Quest, defeat as many scuttlers as you can. The scuttlers are here in these chambers. And so when we move into one of those chambers, we have to have combat with them and the orange value there, that is their strength. And fighting scuttlers, you cannot flee. If you win, loot one and place one of those uh, quest markers in the chamber. So you can only fight the, the each scuttler once. If you lose, we lose health. Reward, gain one XP for every three that you defeat. So when you go on a quest, you will enter from the red arrow and each of the icons you will have to encounter as you move into that chamber. The feathers there, those are the story cards and the number associated, that will be added to any kind of bad thing that happens. So if you had a story card where you were fighting a skeleton with a strength of three and we were on a zero level, we would add zero to that three. If we were on a two level, that's a deeper space, that's more dangerous. We would add two to that skeleton strength and so on. And then there are different uh, types of good things that we can come across. We can loot. So when you loot, you draw two and you get money. When you acquire, you draw two there because of the two and you can acquire items. When we forage, we can forage two and we can get two forageables and then, or we can gain some health. When you are in the dungeon, you ignore those hazard icons, those exclamation points. So that's really cool. So we're here. We'll move on to this first story card there. I will put my dungeon right here. And then we will draw our first story card. And we find a corpse. 
If the body, it's the body of a less fortunate explorer. Okay, so here's what we can do. We can check her pockets, we can search her backpack, or we can bury her. If we check her pockets, loot one, loot two instead, if your agility is four or higher, mine's not. We can search her backpack, which will take time, but we can loot two and acquire one. Hey, that's pretty good. Or we can bury her and we can spend two pep to gain some XP. Uh, I think I want to search her backpack. And so we'll spend one time. If I was keeping track of time, my, my timer is off there. But you would move one time and then we would loot two and acquire one. So let's loot two. Let's see what coins we have. Uh, two coins. So one there, one there. So we're up to 12 coins and we are acquiring one. So we are acquiring this item here. We have a pep potion. And so we could take our uh, little icon here, our little uh, gear token, and we can add that to our card there to gain one of those pep potions. And then you would continue to do that as you are moving through. Some of the dungeons have spaces where you do need to spend time, like it takes time to cross this bridge, or you might have to uh, jump here. And so that will take some pep. Such a cool little design. I love this. I love so much about this game. I love the little carnival mini games, the pressure luck games. I think these are fantastic. I love the multi-use cards, man. So cool. So much good information is on these small cards. It doesn't feel cramped because of Paul's really clean iconography and really clean art style. There is just enough flavor text. There is just enough there to suggest and to create a theme and an atmosphere really, really great deck. But what really, I think, elevates this game for me for being the dungeon dive are these side quests, these little quests that we can go on that have these really interesting, I think, interesting little dungeon crawling mini games. And each one is different and each one you will have a different type of quest. And when that miners guild gets flipped over, then you can go on the harder quests. And man, this is just such a cool little game. I love this game. I have not won yet. I've not won a game. I've only played uh, three times and I haven't really come close to winning. But um, I am in love with this game. I like the mechanism of worker placement and of um, action selection. I would love to see a full big box version of this game that would be a competitive uh, worker placement game where you could actually be one of these dung shovelers and you could gain more workers. You could hire more workers like a worker placement game. And then you could send your workers out to do multiple things on the same turn, on the same time, in the same day. And yeah, this game is great. The Crows of Copper Shell Bay. It packs so much game and so much interesting game and really good decisions. I mean, every turn, you are making decisions in this game. It's one decision after another, but there are still random encounters and there's still pressure luck. There's still uh, a hint of adventure. There's still a lot of the things that we like on the dungeon dive. And so I really cannot recommend the Crows of Copper Shell Bay enough. Um, once again, I think now Paul Stapleton, I, I feel like he just makes games specifically for me. Like he is so in tune with my wavelength, with the vibes that I like. And I just... I, I have a hard time imagining imagining that he'll ever make a game that I don't like. Uh, like I said, Popper's Ladder is my favorite adventure game of all time. I also love his modern day uh, little city adventure game, his urban adventure game called BN1. I really should go and buy his other games. I know he has like a zombie game or something, but uh, yeah, I am a huge fan of the Crows of Copper Shell Bay. I think this game is fantastic. So, all right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the Crows of Copper Shell Bay. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye.